everyone, so this is the first time I am ever doing a screen capture video like this, so I'm gonna give it my best shot, but let's see how it goes. Today I thought I would show you how I basically go through a photo shoot from start to finish. Um, I'm not gonna like edit an image, but basically how I cull and bring in my images, basically my workflow for after a photo shoot because I've had a few people ask me how I do that side of things. So I use Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom CC. Um, I don't know if I have the most updated version. I literally, I'm not the most techie person in the world so I just have what I have. And I know how it works and it is the best and easiest uh, program I think. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Lightroom itself and I don't think you can actually see the top of my screen but um, I'm going to create a new catalogue and I've already done this but if, if you don't know how to do that you go up to file and then I'm going to create a new catalogue and the reason I do this is because um, this kind of keeps every photo shoot separate. I used to have one big catalog for everything and it was really confusing. So I've already made mine, but you would sort of go in here, find the images that you want to, well, find the file that you want to put your catalog in. In this case, I have it in the actual photo shoots folder um, and you would name it like whatever you want to name it. Um, I'm not going to do that because I've already done one, as you can see here. So that would be, and then you'll get this kind of big blank screen. Next, you need to find some images to import. So I'm going to go to import and I have my hard drive here and I've got all my file system there. So I'm just going to find the images in the folder that I need them. And I here, this is a photo shoot I did in London. You may have already seen some of the images um, and I've already gone through this, but I'm just for the sake of like a demo going to pretend that I haven't. So here is um, or I've already imported the images onto my external hard drives, so I don't actually keep any of my image files on my computer itself. I have two external hard drives and I have a third one actually that I back everything up to. I also use a cloud backup. Um, which runs at night, so I never turn off my laptop, so I'm, I have like four backups of everything, and I am a bit OCD when it comes to file saving, I don't want to run the risk of losing anything, so um, my file management system is, as you can see here, I've, I got, I make a folder for every month of the year, and then every shoot has its own folder, in this case it is this one, and I literally have all the, the raw files in here, and I'm, I'm, as you can see in here, I've also got any of the PSDs I did, they have their own folder, um, the low-res files have their own folder, and this is the actual original catalogue for the shoot, um, so ignore those. So now um, on this side, on the right hand side, you can build previews. Um, these are like almost sort of prints of what the images look like, the raw files. It just speeds up your workflow and makes it easier for Lightroom to process the files because raw files are massive. So it kind of makes a fake little print of it. I think that's what it work, how it works. So I've just got mine on minimal. That's just how I work. Um, you can, if you're importing your files first off from your like SD card into Lightroom and then onto a second hard drive as well, you can import them onto a second hard drive if you want to. I can't because these are already imported. And this is a really, really good tip as I actually have a bunch of presets here. You can apply a preset to every single image as you import it if you wanted to. Um, I'm not actually going to do that this time because a lot of the studio work I do, my presets, well, none of these presets work or I don't know which one I want to use yet, so I'm just going to import them as they are. You could also import in, um, put in some keywords here, so if you wanted to, like, I could put in my name, um, I could put in, uh, studio photo, and this is probably a really good thing to do for like the sake of metadata and stuff and in here you can also like change the metadata I don't touch that I tend to just leave it as it is and then um, click import that's all I'm gonna do so I don't have the fastest computer in the world so bear with me while these import and it literally brings in all of the images straight into Lightroom 
Um, and this is why the catalog is really important because it keeps them all in one place. Um, da, 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 almost done. <laughs> Okay, getting there. So, just to walk you through this sort of area. So this is where I do all my culling, which is in the library section. I don't do anything here. Like, some people do, and maybe I should, but at the moment I don't touch this panel. Everything I do is here in this main section. And the way I cull is I have a few different methods. To walk you through it quickly, I will go to my first image, and obviously that was like the first image of the day, it was a test. I don't delete anything as I go, I literally just go through, and I am using my keyboard right now, and I'm just thumbing through the images. And the way I make my selection, so if I see an image I like, like for example if I liked that one, I hit the number 5 on my keyboard, and I set a rating to 5. And I will literally go through the entire shoot, and find all of the images I like, and any of them, like if anything catches my eye, I'm like, oh that's nice, that's worked quite well, then I rate it five. And I go through the entire shoot like this, just going through and being like, okay, that's cute, that's cute, that's not cute. But anything I don't like, I just leave. I don't do anything to it, I don't like zero it or rate it anything, I just ignore it, I just go past it. See, I love that one, that's actually one of the finals. Um, so let's say I did that for the entire shoot. What I then do is down here on the right hand side, I go to filters off and I turn it onto rated. And what this does is it gets rid of all of the ones that I didn't select and it brings up only the images that I have ended up selecting. So now, let's say I had like, because often I end up with loads of images I've selected because I'm not being very ruthless, I'm literally just selecting anything that I like. I'll go through them again and I'll be like, okay, I don't actually like that one so much or like I don't love that one so much because of her hands. I'm gonna hit zero and that gets rid of it. And and <laughs> this takes up this this is why it takes a little while because you have to go through this a few times. I end up probably going through my images maybe three or four times until I get the ones I'm gonna actually work on. So once I've got rid of any definite no's, again, I'll go through and I change the selection tool I'm using so I no longer rate things, I will start to flag things. And the way you flag is you use the letter P on your keyboard and it rates them as a little flag. Ooh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Um, so it rates them as a little flag. And the reason I do this is because you can then further bring down your selection. So what I'll do once I've got that is I'll go through, so once I've, you know, I'll go through and pick all the ones I definitely want to edit and I'll flag them. And then I change over here into the right hand side and I go back into flagged. And then I've further culled. So as you can see, little by little, I'm getting rid of more and more images and I'm narrowing down my focus into just the ones I want to work on. And the great thing about this is that as I'm editing and I decide actually I don't like this one anymore, you just click the letter U on your keyboard, press U and it gets rid of it. So it's just, it's just making your workflow really focused. Before when I didn't sort of use this method down here of flagging things and rating things, I would just get so lost in like where my images were, which ones I wanted to edit. I would end up doing a lot more editing than I needed to. So that is how I do that. Um, and then if you want a really quick Lightroom tutorial, I'm not, I could do a more in-depth one another time, but the next step I do is go into the develop tab and I actually do all my color correcting first before I bring anything into Photoshop for any skin retouching. But on the left hand side over here is where I have all my presets um, and I actually have all my own here. Um, and let's say I want to use my 01. Um, what I'll then do is I'll click onto that one and it will apply the preset and the first thing I do before I do anything else is enable profile corrections and that gets rid of any vignetting and distortion from my lens and I'm not going to do this, I'm just going to do this really quickly but you know this is what I would do in a nutshell is really quickly I just start fiddling with the exposure which is you know the brightness of the image um, 
fixing that because as you could see I tend to shoot everything a little bit underexposed because I prefer to be underexposed than overexposed um, and I know I know that I can bring an image massively bright if I need to so I'll find an exposure I like uh, select the contrast la di da di da and let's pretend I'm happy with how that's looking once I've edited one image that I like the way it looks I'm going to go back to my library and I'm actually going to get a few images up for you again because I've just realised I have no images there. So let's pretend these are all flagged. <laughs> these ones, I'm actually going to flag them. So pick, pick, pick. So these are all my flagged images. I've edited one of them and the great thing about Studio is that the light should be pretty consistent between all of these images. The way to quickly batch edit your, like, visual, the, the lighting side of things, is I right click on my image, go to develop settings, copy settings, and then you can go through and like untick anything you don't want it to paste. For example, the crop, I tend to not click because it will just recrop everything the same way for all of them and you tend to want to crop image by image rather than batch crop. Uh, hit copy and then I will go over here, shift and select all of the images, right click, develop settings, paste settings, and why is it not, oh it's doing it, it's doing it, it's slow, come on baby, come on, there we go, and look, they're all already correctly lit, and of course you need to go through them again, like image by image, but it, it speeds things up so much to be able to do that, um, Especially if you do anything like weddings or portraits, you will need to be doing that. Otherwise, you'll have thousands of images to edit in one go. Um, so this is just a really quick and easy method of batch like light editing your images. Um, so let's pretend I'm happy with that image. I've done all its skin retouching. I've done everything I wanted to do to it. I will go back to the library area. Then I'll hit export. And I, over here, this is where I, oh, this is, you're seeing the back end of my um, workflow here. Again, go back to my file. And how I like to organize my files is I create a new folder for my images. So I tend to make a low res folder. I'm just gonna call this low res two because I've already got one. Um, and make that there. I'll choose it. And then in this panel, I rename all my files to my name just for, I don't know, copyright reasons and all that stuff. Um, and this is where you can choose the quality and everything. I always export everything at sRGB. This is pretty much the standard you want to be sticking to. Quality, I leave it at 100. Unless I'm doing things for specific email, you can click this and limit the file size to like 500k, which is quite useful to be able to know you can do that. And then over here, um, let because I'm exporting these for low resolution, I resize to fit and you can kind of choose any number you want, but generally speaking, I like to stick to a width of about 1,500 and the resolution of 72. That is pretty much the industry standard of what you want to be uploading to the web. Uh, and then I don't touch anything else. This is literally like, we could even just close all these. Um, obviously that is important to know where you're actually exporting to. You can also choose to um, put the images into the same folder as the original photo, like the, the uh, raw file is, that's quite a useful one. And then you could put it in a subfolder here if you wanted to. But I'm actually just gonna, I just tend to make a new folder. I just find it easier to do that. And then hit export. And as I said, again, slow computer, <laughs> it exports the file. Um, and then all I do is redo the same thing, but <clears throat> I go and do it for high res. So I'll make a high res folder, choose. And then for high res, I just, I don't even let it resize anything. I'll just change this to 300 and I export it in its actual size. So it's not being reduced down in size at all. Um, just because I like to have an exported version of the biggest version of the file, just in case I need it for print or anything down the line. I do this to everything, no matter how big or small the shoot is, because the reality is you just never know when you might need 
a high-res version of a file. So um, that is pretty much everything that I think you need to know in terms of a Lightroom workflow. Um, I hope that was helpful and if I've missed anything or if you have any questions about anything that I've maybe gone over too quickly, uh, feel free to leave a comment or send me an email, DM me on Instagram at Olivia Bossert, whatever you need and I will help you. And if this has been helpful and you want more tutorials like this, then let me know and I would love to do that. Okay, I will speak to you later. Bye!